All right, once you start using the news function in SharePoint, you're probably going to end up with a lot of news posts and you might want to sort of organize those and present them in categories or along certain themes. Uh, so there are a few different ways to do this. I'm going to show you the way that I found to be most convenient uh, and sort of the most uh, supportable and sustainable going forward. So the first thing I did was I added a column into, actually just to give you some background, this is a site called Office 365 Training where we hold all of the resources for the different workshops that we run on, on uh, Office 365 or Microsoft 365. Um, we also use it as a place to from which to share news updates you know what's new in these in an application how to use things whether you should use things etc um, so i have a lot of blog posts here well i call them blog posts but they're really news posts uh, and i added a topic column and this is a choice column so if i go into the column settings You'll see it as a choice, and it's got all of these different applications or services in Microsoft 365, and it is allowing multiple selections. So basically, a single blog post might relate to multiple applications. So, for example, if I'm talking about, you know, how to do a mail merge in Power Automate, that's going to involve Microsoft Excel. It's going to involve Power Automate. It might even involve SharePoint uh, or OneDrive. So I can tag a single uh, news post with multiple different topics. Uh, and that really is the, the key to this, is making it easy for people to do that by adding a, a column so that as people are generating the news post, they can edit the page details to specify the topic for that particular post. Uh, now, once you have that uh, topic there, then you have a way to filter these news posts. So if I want to see all of the news posts related to SharePoint, I can filter this column and select SharePoint and click apply. And then I could just create a custom view of this or, you know, save this as a new view and share that with people. Um, but it's kind of ugly. So I want to make it a little bit nicer. I can actually, uh, what I want to do is create a page that will be sort of a landing page for that SharePoint news. So as new things are published, they'll show up on that page. Uh, so based on the fact that I can filter these lists, I can also filter things like the news web part or a highlighted content web part. So I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. Um, basically, the first will be using the highlighted content web part, which is a little more flexible. Um, and the other will be using the news web part, which is a little bit simpler. So we'll, we'll take a look at both. So I'm just going to click new and click site page to create a new page in this site. And I'll just call it SharePoint news, Come on. news. And I'll just change this to a simple plain header and remove the byline. And I'm just going to hit save as draft just to lock in that name and then click edit again. And I'm going to turn off the you might be interested and the comments. And now all I need to do is add a web part to this page to show those news posts that are related to SharePoint. And as I said, there are two ways, two, two web parts. There are probably more than that, but the two I'm going to show are the highlighted content web part and then the news web part. So first off, highlighted content is kind of a general purpose. This is like the Swiss Army knife of uh, web parts because you can use it to surface content from a lot of different places inside of Microsoft 3, or inside of SharePoint primarily. Uh, but as far as different kinds of content, specific types of documents from specific places, etc. Uh, it defaults to showing the most recent documents. And if I click the edit web part button here, you'll see that the source is set to all sites in the hub. Now this is a communication site that's connected to a SharePoint hub site. So it's basically pulling news posts or documents, everything from across the entire hub. So that's the Office 365 training site there. We have an instructional technology blog. Um, and yeah, there's probably a couple others in the hub that, but not many have news. So the first thing I need to do is filter it down to the page library on this site because that's where all of the news I care about 
surfacing appears. And then on that, uh, or I should say in that source, I only want to get the news posts. So pages are things like the home page of the site or the resource pages that I've created for each of the workshops. I don't care about those here. I just want the news posts. So I'll select type news. And then we can filter and sort. Uh, so first off, um, you can filter on the title or by things that were recently added, changed, created by, modified by, etc. Uh, but I'm going to select page properties because when you add that column to your library, that is now a, you know, defines a property for each page. So I'm going to say select a property. I'm sorry, you need to select under the selected property. Topic equals and then select SharePoint. And so now, just that quickly, we're getting all of the SharePoint news posts right there. Uh, now, in terms of some additional options here, you can sort the default sort is by most recent, which probably makes the most sense because you want people, want people to see the newest news at the top. But you can also sort by author, name, or title, whichever you prefer. Uh, audience targeting is a little beyond the scope of this, so just know that you can, with some extra work, you can scope these to particular audiences, particular uh, Microsoft 365 groups, etc., um, if you need to. Uh, again, it's, it's a little more complicated, so let's not get off on that tangent right now. Uh, under layout, this is going to affect the look of the web part. So first off, if I leave show title and commands on, then it's going to show the site pages title. Uh, I could change it to something else like, you know, the latest about SharePoint and leave that. Uh, but it's also going to show this see all link, which is going to basically just take people to a page showing them all of the news posts that are you know, that are also filtered. That's the nice thing about that see all button is it's still respecting the filtering of this web part. So it'll still sh only show the SharePoint news posts. Um, if you don't want to show those, you can just toggle that to off, in which case it's what people are just going to see the posts themselves. It's entirely up to you whether you have that on or off. So use whatever fits your requirements. Uh, now, in terms of the actual layout choices, we have the grid view, which is kind of nice. It's, I think the grid view is probably the most aesthetically pleasing, and I'm not really a designer, but it's the one I like to look at the most because I think it gives you the, the best trade-off between the amount of content for the space used. Um, for example, if you choose list, it's showing you more, but it's kind of ugly. The carousel just shows one at a time and people need to know to kind of scroll through. So that's not great. Uh, compact is probably a close second to grid because it's showing similar things, showing the thumbnail plus the title of the post and people can click, but there's a lot of wasted white space over here. Now, if you were putting this into a narrower division on a page, so for example, if this were a you know, a two column page. And let me just, if we do a save as draft to see what that looks like, that's not too bad because then you can fill up the other side of the page with more content. Um, but for a full width section, it just results in a lot of wasted space. So to be perfectly honest, I typically prefer using the grid layout. Uh, and then f below that, there is an option here to show how many items or set how many items are shown. Um, now the default is eight. Uh, if you want to show everything, so all of your news posts, you just need to set this to a number that's higher than the number of news posts that you have in that category. And that might vary from one category to another. So you can just set it at some crazy high number. The max is actually 500. But that means that as you get more and more news, it's just going to keep filling up that page. 500, as I said, is the maximum. So if I try to go larger than that, it'll say it has to be between 1 and 500. So let's go back to 500. All right. So that is using the 
highlighted content web part. Uh, if I save as a draft, I can see what that looks like. Now, the other option, you yeah, know, that, that's not bad. People can easily kind of scroll through and see what they're looking for. It's got the big images and all that kind of stuff. Now, if you wanted to make it look a little, uh, maybe a little bit more interactive, um, less kind of boring than this big grid of things, uh, you can use the news web part. It has some different layout options. So I'm going to edit the page again, and I'm just going to add the news web part above the highlighted content here just for simplicity. I could create a separate page, but let's just do it here. Uh, in this case, I'm going to select the news web part. Now, the upside is that the news web part, by default, is only going to bring in news. So I don't need to worry about setting the, you know, like the source or the content or anything. Uh, actually, I do a, a little bit. So when I click the pencil to edit this, I do need to make sure that the new source is this site. Because, again, this site's connected to other sites. If I wanted to bring additional sites, I would be able to do that. But for right now, I'm just going to say this site. Um, do I want to show the title and commands? Again, that would just turn that news... Uh, text header there and the see all button on or off uh, and then you have some options here for the now they've rearranged these a little bit so the layout is first so you kind of I'm just going to skip that for the time being because I want to get down to where the filtering is because you're filtering the same way basically uh, I'm going to select the filter drop down here Select page property, same thing, select topic equals SharePoint. There you go. That audience targeting is the same thing as in the highlighted content web part. Um, now, in the news web part, you do have a couple other options like showing you can show the number of views or not, you can show the author or not. Um, you can show the first publish date or not. So you have some different options. So maybe I don't necessarily want to show the publish date or the author, but I do want to show how many people have viewed it. I can do that. Now, in terms of the view options or the layouts here, um, this is using the side-by-side uh, -side view, which is okay. Uh, there is a top story view, which kind of has a larger block on the left here for the latest story. Uh, and then the rest are on the right. We have that same kind of list. Well, it's not really the same as the list in the content, uh, highlighted content web part, but similar. Um, we have the hub news. I kind of like this because it gives you a combination of the that grid view of the highlighted content web part along with a list on the right-hand side here of more of them. Um, and... Yeah, so that's the hub news. And then we have carousel, which is just like the carousel in the highlighted content. Uh, and tiles, which is only going to show the, t the first five. So if you only ever have five news posts or you want to just highlight the, the top five, or sorry, four. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. You can set it up to five. If you want to show the latest one, two, three, four, or five news posts, this would be a good one. But just know that they're only going to see the the five top five most recent whatever um, unless they click that see all button but hub news I think is a good compromise because it gives you a good amount of, of things to look at and a, and a nice compact view uh, now one of the other things about the news web part is that you can also specifically organize it so if there are specific news post that you want to bring to the top you can do that by clicking that select and essentially you would find the news post that you want to highlight uh, maybe this is a really important one and I want to make sure that that is at the top so I can click it and come on Oh, I'm sorry, I have to move it over on the right I haven't used this in a while so basically you can sort of specify the order that the news appears in. If you have a large number, this would be kind of crazy, uh, so I wouldn't recommend doing it, but just know that it is an option if you wanted to be very specific about how things were sorted. Uh, so yeah, that is it. Uh, 
those are the two different ways. Again, use whichever one you like better. You could even use a combination. Maybe use uh, the, the hub news at the top and then have a list down here of the rest of them. But use your imagination. There are a lot of different options here and almost any, you could do almost anything you want uh, within the confines of these two web parts. So hopefully this is helpful. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the uh, comments down below. Thanks and have a great day.